You are listening to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss our RC adventures. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast, where we discuss the ups and downs of the new RC Flyer. Join your hosts, Michael and Jay, as they take flight at the park. Now on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Park Flyer Podcast. My name is Michael, and with me always is my co-host, Jay, formerly from the AK. And I'm really getting used to that now. (laughs) Well, I'm glad to hear it, Mike. I can't think of anything good to go in there, so (laughs) I'm still thinking. But if anybody has any suggestions, please let us know. Yeah, no doubt. Well, uh, we're happy that uh, you're getting your studio up and running. It sounds a lot better, and uh, and you're not in the Hall of Justice tonight, I guess. I know, the Hall of Justice, I do miss it. Uh, hopefully this sounds a little bit better. There's a little bit more padding and carpeting and things to absorb sound. So uh, hopefully this sounds a lot better. Well, good. Hey, uh, the last time we discussed, I, I found a new product. Remember I told you I found some Gorilla Glue? Uh, uh, oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, I, remember. I was able to use it, and uh, unfortunately I used it uh, to attach a piece of rubber to plastic. And it worked really, really well. And okay. I brought it home. I brought it home to t- test it on my foams now. So I get to do that. But the, originally, I needed it for this rubber to plastic piece. It held really, really well. I was very impressed with it. And hopefully by our next episode, now, we'll... Wait, we'll didn't you use that in your, your real aircraft? Uh, that would be it, yes. There's a rubber seal. Okay. And we had to <laughs> seal it on there, so... Um, yeah, my mechanic used it to uh, put it in there. We had some contact cement, and it wasn't holding as well. So that Gorilla Glue, we put it on the edge, and it held perfect. So I'm pretty excited about it. And now it's sitting on my uh, on my desk over here waiting to test out the foams, which is what we're talking about tonight, basically, is foam and foam construction. I know we have several foam airplanes that we fly out in the park. We do. Uh, and different do. different types of foams as well. Uh, I have EPO, EPP, EPS, uh, Blue Core. Those are all different types of foams. And uh, I know you have you have anything different than those? No, that's pretty much it, uh, except for some of the old uh, GWS kits, were, which was more of that styrofoam stuff. But um, all, all those foams do have one, one thing in common. They don't like hitting the ground. And unfortunately, mm. I, I'd say somewhere along the life of all my models, they've They've come in contact or had a little mishap with the ground every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, mine have mine has too. And as a matter of fact, tonight what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about repairing the types of foam. Specifically, we'll do a two-part series on the foam construction. Uh, and tonight we'll talk about EPO and EPP. Uh, next time we'll talk about EPS or that styrofoam and how to fix it and what to do when something breaks. Right now I have this L39 that's in my shop. And it's missing a little nose cone. And I have to build a nose cone for it. Uh, it is an EPO type airplane. And it got into a little mishap once before. I think in one of our previous podcasts, you were talking about the battery and the separation and hitting the ground. And so I figured at this episode, <laughs> we could take it and kind of explain to our listeners what we were talking about. Because I said it was a whole totally different story and I forgot to tell it. But basically, I have a, a Great Plains L39. It's one of those $99 kits that came fully, you know, ready to go. You just bind and fly. (laughs) $99.95. And it used to come with those, (laughs) what do they call those flow masters or uh, the, remember the GBS came out with the new EDFs. They were little small things and they had a, uh, some type of a, I can't remember what the engine is. It's some, something flow. IPS? No, 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 the the little EDF. The little EDF that goes in there that had the oh oh the, uh, they called them the uh, kind of old man's disease. Why are you doing this? To me? Um, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> I, I I know what you're right. talking about. Unfortunately, I don't know if that helps our listeners or any. But I'll uh, I'll figure it out. Hey, so Mike, yes. before you before you continue though, I, I know you know you're talking about repairing you know foam models mainly. Uh, uh, Things like you were talking about your, G, your G, not GWS, that's a Great Plains plane back there. But, um, you know, most guys, the good thing about park flyers nowadays, they can just buy a part, right? So why why do they want to repair? I, I think 
a lot of people are afraid to repair their phone. Really don't know how to you know to attach it, or they they just feel like oh I got I cracked a wing or I got this big divot in my wing. I should just throw it away and just go get the part or spend eighty dollars or half the price of the model you know to get another another part. So, um, you know, should they do that or is this something that the rank beginner can do or do you have to have some, some experience? To do that? I don't think you have to have super experience to do it. Um, like anything else, you and I, when we're, whenever we find something, we look at it and go, hmm, I wonder if that'll work. And then we start messing around with it and eventually we, we figure it out. Uh, we're here tonight to talk a little bit about how to do it so that the new guy doesn't get or, or even someone that's been doing it a while doesn't get uh, confused or or feel overwhelmed by messing with the foam. I think foam is really misunderstood. I I think that people, Mm -hmm. I think that people are a little afraid of it. And some of the companies, you are correct. Some of the companies out there have come up with foam type airplanes where in the back of the store, they have parts for almost everything that comes on the aircraft. You know, you can buy wings or, or tails or whatever, right from the store. Uh, I believe, um, Park Zone has a lot of those. That you just buy them right from the right. store. Very much. You so. just buy them right off the shelf. They're bind and fly. Once you go fly them, if you crashed it or whatever, then it turns into, hey, I just repair the wing or just buy the new tail and you just put the fus- you know fuselage together or what have you, and you can recycle the components inside. If your airplane does have parts and you, it's easy to go get a new part that looks brand new and it's painted and you're ready to go. You can be back in the air relatively quickly. I would suggest that if you're going to repair your foam, it's probably going to take you a little longer than five or ten minutes just to reinstall a servo and put the airplane right. back together. Well, let's let's just take your plane that you have back there, that great plane. That one's discontinued, uh, and that is correct. I mean, you, you can still you, buy yes. it. You, you you can still buy it here and there, no problem. But you can't. The parts are getting scarce. Correct. And like you said, you're going to talk about a nose a nose cone repair. And it's not that you can't get a nose cone, but it's kind of like, you know, searching for the Holy Grail at times for that one part you need. True. Yeah. And uh, really, a, a quick couple, you know, a quick hour of work and you can make one or two parts and be on your way. It's not that difficult. That, that is true. But I, like it, like I said, I, I know when I first started getting larger size foam airplanes, I had an F-15 that crashed. There was no way I was going to repair it. I just didn't know how. So I wound up buying new parts for it. But like you said, those have been discontinued. And now if you ding it up, which doesn't happen as often, but if you do, you need to feel comfortable enough to start messing with the foam uh, and repairing the foam as opposed to just scrapping the whole airplane. Because it it may be, in my case, it, it, it didn't really do any major damage where it wouldn't fly. It just needed to be straightened out. Right. It wasn't structural or cosmetic, that's what it yeah, was. Yeah, the nose cone. It, it'll actually fly without the nose cone. Sure will. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's just a big flight. It won't fly as fast or look as cool, but it'll fly. And, and some of the airplanes will fly without certain parts of the airplane, you know, the belly pods or whatever hanging off of them. They, they snap off or the little missiles on the end of the wings, they snap off when you tip it over. But it'll still fly without those. And you, just, you could cut them off if you right. wanted to. So back to my L39, we uh, obviously, you know, pretty common practice flying the park. And I got this L39 out and I was trying to figure out what battery went in it. And I was thinking to myself, hey, I bought this specific battery. It's a 2200 milliamp uh, four cell. And I thought, oh, I bought this battery for this particular airplane from what I could remember. I put it in there, powered it up. Man, this thing was just wow! It was just wide open. It, it, the the little motor, it's got a little fifty millimeter EDF in there. It was screaming. I mean, just l- waiting to be let loose. And I thought, man, this is really this is going to be really cool. You know, I mean, I can launch it with one hand, and you know, it gets going pretty good. And I tossed it and went full power, and the thing started flying out. And I thought, man, this thing feels really heavy. It didn't jump in the air and just go sky high like I thought it would. It just kind of puttered around, building up speed. So I finally climbed up a right. couple of you know mistakes high and got it going left and right. And I thought, okay, now I've got some speed under it and it's flying. I'll do a loop. So I did this big loop. And when I was coming down out of the loop, I had all the entire elevator back. And, had, and it was coming down and just moving. And the faster it came, the less it wanted to pitch nose up. So it comes zipping down, and I mean, it was 
flying. This thing was just like a brick coming down out of the sky. And, and, uh, I was like, wow, this thing is really, really not reacting the way I would like it to. I better come in and land and see what the problem is. So I came around, touched down. I was going, <laughs> I was going so fast that when the airplane actually touched down and it was a nice landing, it was just a greaser of a landing, but the airplane's nose was so heavy and I had these little plastic skids that we talked about last time. The skids caught on this little grassy area, and basically the nose kept moving. The airplane, the whole airplane came to a stop, but the nose cone and the battery kept going. And they went a good 12 feet further than one of the airplanes stopped. Whoops. And, yeah. And I realized at that point that the battery that I had was probably way too much weight for the nose of this thing. It wasn't flying. I went back and looked, uh, looked up the directions on the, I mean, looked in the directions and I was supposed to be using an 850 millimeter. I mean, 850 milliamp battery, not a 2200. So there's a big difference between a (laughs) four cell 850 and a 2200, the weight. Once I did the repair, I put it back in the air with the 850 thing just flies like a dream. But now I'm responsible for having to figure out how to fix this. Now the airplane's made out of EPO and you have EPO airplanes too, right? I think you have one or two. Oh yeah. EPO yeah. Font, yeah. Yeah. Most, most modern planes now that's, that's the number one material that's in. It's, it's, it's right. And so the EPO foam is a close sale. Uh, it, it kind of bends. It, it has a little flexibility to it. It's rigid when it needs to be if you put carbon in there, but it does have some great characteristics as far as getting crunched. And so in my particular case, right. it kind of bent the front nose and, you know, kind of tore everything uh, to let the battery go through <laughs> to get out the side of it. it yeah, it did, if, I, I thought it also caught a sprinkler. Once again, this is one of your sprinkler stories in that field. And I thought it once it caught the sprinkler – it, it was like uh, an arrestor hook. The plane stopped, but unfortunately, the battery in the whole front half of the plane kept going. You know, that wall of inertia. Little skids that I have on the bottom of it to land. Because I used to fly off, a, off of a, a paved runway, and I didn't want to scratch the bottom of the foam, so I put those little skids where the servos are so that it doesn't mess up the servos. That way, it grinds down the skids and not the foam. The foam never touches the runway. So that's what grabbed onto these little grass areas. It has a little pointy part right at the at the front of it where it, Oh, that's right. It was tough. Gra- yeah, those tough grass. Yeah. And it just there. grabbed the grass and came to a yeah. stop and the nose kept going. So anyway, now the nose is kind of crunched up and I've got to basically figure out how to straighten this thing out. Now, EPO foam, like I said, has some great characteristics. And if your grandmother or mother or anyone passed down a teapot, since Jay seems to think nobody <laughs> understands what a teapot is, but if you, yeah, no millennial is going to know what a teapot is. What? <laughs> well, we may have someone other than millennials listening to a podcast. Oh, okay. But anyway, the the basically, if you have a teapot or some some sort of a hot water vessel, if you want to just do it in a pan, you can heat the water up to not quite boiling, but pretty close. If you're if you're in a teapot, go ahead and make it steam is what you're looking for, and the steam will actually relax the foam, and you can straighten the majority of it out. You can straighten the foam out and basically, you know, make it look more like it was when it was new. Right. The uh, the foam will actually kind of not puff puff back, but it expands back to its, its original structure, or or I'd say at least within eighty to ninety percent of it. Correct. It does. It, it kind of straightens out basically, and 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 yeah. or you can dip it in the hot water, not not boiling water, but you can dip it in hot water. And leave it for a few seconds, and it, it will actually start straightening out. Right, as well. and it, and it, and usually you do that. You have to do that if you have a deep dent. You know, if you really dent it by putting it, pouring hot water over it, the whole structure will help the whole thing to re-expand again. Right, but it, it's it, it it has a memory basically. This EPO type foam. Yes, yes, and and it goes back into its normal shape. So having said that. Um, I basically put it all back, you know, stri- kind of got it in the warm water, made it look like it was originally. And then we kind of just used Gorilla Glue and glued it back on to the other piece. So now the two pieces uh, are glued, but there's a crack in the middle of them. I mean, you know, you can see that there's there's a crack where the two pieces meet. 
So we have a product called yes. uh, Spackling, right? It's a oh, oh, there you, you go, <laughs> fast Light, and fi- <laughs> fast spackling. and final lightweight spackling. Uh, it's a DAP product, and it comes in a little bitty container. It's about three bucks or so. It when you open it up, it yep. looks basically like it's you know chalk. Yeah, there you go. It's it's almost a chalk look. And it it's kind of a dry, uh, not really powdery, but it's got some moisture to it. So you just wipe. Uh, it reminds me of like not quite like toothpaste, but you know, kind of like um, super airy light toothpaste or frosting. Yeah, frosting is probably better. So now you take this frosting or this. It, it seems like frosting, but you take the dap, this uh, spackling, and you run it on your finger, and and you just kind of pack it into that little crease. And if you pack it into the crease and let it dry, you can literally sand it down into a smooth surface and put a little paint on it and spray uh, your paint back. And it looks just like new, actually. Well, funny you should mention that, Mike, because right here I have an example. I happen to have uh, gotten a free plane. Mm -hmm. uh, And the reason I got the plane was that it, it was damaged and the guy didn't know how to fix it. So he gave it to me. And um, it's kind of like one of those Bixler planes where the propeller's in the back. And really, it's really kind of hard to have the, you know, damage it, so to speak. And uh, he hit hard enough that the wing popped out. And it actually, the, uh, the blade, I mean, the uh, propeller went across, went across the wing and cut big chunks out, which is really unusual for that plane. And so I put this, ran the spackle in there. And I, I haven't sanded this or anything. I just, you know, roughly put the, put the spackle in there and just took a credit card. And smooth right over the top of it, you know. You do that, and, and depending on how how deep the gash is, you might have to, you know, do it once, let it set, and then do it another time. You know, don't try to fill it all in at once if it's really really deep. You can do it, you know, two or three steps, and uh, it dries better. Yeah, that and way. you can put a little and, water in there; it'll thin it out a little bit. So as you as you pack it up, like you could do it really rough the first time, and if you just took a sponge and lightly just brushed across it, it'll actually smooth all the. The big chunky parts out, and then you can use a credit card if you wanted. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, use those old credit cards, or when they send you the credit cards in the mail, you know, like hey, buy our credit card, and they send you that dummy one. I got a whole stack. Of right. That I right. You filled yours in to a certain point. Yeah, I filled them in. Um, luckily, they were shallow cuts, so I, I could fill it in one one application. I kind of roughly smoothed it out, and uh, I haven't painted it or sanded it. Usually, I sand it, you know, lightly sand it with you know, um, 180 plus, you know, sandpaper, get it kind of smooth. And if I still have a divot or whatever in there, I may put a, one more coat over it, you know, to fill it in. And that's it, and let it dry, and then I'll sand that. Um, and that's generally what I do. And after I do that, then I grab our Minwax that we like to use. Right. Our polyurethane that I, we always talk about. Right. And then I'll run a coat of that polyurethane over the over the fill. And the reason I do that is this stuff is not waterproof. If you get it wet or you go out on a dewy day <clears throat> and you don't paint over it. Now, if you paint over it, you don't have to worry about it. But if you don't do that, <laughs> if you go out and it's even the, a bit of moisture out there, this stuff will soak it up and it'll thaw out. Yeah, it's so. it's water water based, I think. So at some point in the game, if it does get wet, it just starts melting. Because you even after it dries for a week, if you took your finger wet and you kind of started moving over it, it would start. Yeah, it would reabsorb it. And right, just get all gushy again. So, but yeah, just just a coat of paint or polyurethane over the top of that after you're done, then you're good. And then you, and then you can paint it, you can tape it, whatever you want to do, and you'll have no problems with it. Right. Well, so on the L39, on the sides of it, it basically has been repaired. And now I need to make a nose cone. Well, the nose cone is actually crunched. I mean, it's the foam is totally destroyed. So now I have to figure out how to make uh, more of a nose cone. The nose cone uh, is, you know, not very big, but it's made out of EPO foam. And now I have to make it out of something else because I can't. Looks like your dog's been chewing on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does look like that. So what I did is I, I have a product. You can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's the Owings Corning XPS. It comes in about a two by two foot square. You can buy it for like $6 or $5, depending on your area, plus tax. 
And it's about an, uh, two inches thick, super uber lightweight. Uh, it's a great product because you can sand it and cut it and do all these really cool right. things with it. it. It's lightweight, but it's very dense. It's it is. Dense. It is very dense. Oh. But I will tell you that it's very difficult. Not really difficult, but it you can cut it with a, a, a knife, but your knife has to be super sharp. And as oh, yeah. you're cutting through it, the knife dulls very quickly cutting through this because I think it's a fiberglass product and it just dulls the knife. And I've, I've made nice shortcuts, gone back to do it again. And it, it just basically eats up the, you know, the sides of it to where it looks terrible. Now that's not a bad thing. You can sand it. You just, if you're going to make precise cuts, you need to make it a little bit bigger and then sand down to your line as opposed to cutting right on the line and having it look you know, a little messy, I guess. So what I did is I took the nose cone and I basically dropped it onto the corning wear and I just traced it. So it looks like a nose, you know, nose cone. It's about a two inch thick square. And then I use this really cool product that uh, Jay talked me into and it's a foam cutter. And the foam cutter is just this little table cutter. And you got it where? Where would you get yours? Uh, I think I think I got mine at uh, Michael's or Joanne's. So it's a craft store for cutting foam uh, letters and yeah, stuff I out, right? For, I think foam letters and floral, and for like the cutting the floral blocks that they use for you know flower arrangements and stuff. Oh shit! Isn't that it's sitting behind you? Yeah, it is. It's sitting behind me, and it's called um, a Marvy product. I'll see if I can find it and and post a link on the website. But it's basically a foam cutter. It's got a wire. It works off of four D cell batteries, or in this particular one, you can plug it in. I don't know if yours is a plug in and battery, but it's exa- it's exactly like yours. So anyway, the the hot wire heats up, and then I can take my foam piece and I can cut it into the right shape. So once I basically trace it out on the paper, then I can cut it into a shape. On the front of my airplane, it has a little square, so that. It kind of, you know, that's how it glues on to the front of the nose cone. So I created a little square so that I could put it into the nose cone. And then I just leave it at its two inches in a, in kind of a pointy arrowhead looking shape so that I can put it into the air or onto the airplane and then sand the parts down to be more like a cone shape. So the nice part about that, that cutter is it's just like a jigsaw without, without a jigsaw dust flying all over. Of course, now you have the smell, you know, once again, coming off because it is, you are melting foam. That's so, true. you know, try to do it in a, a well-ventilated place. But you could do it inside. I've done it on a kitchen table or, you know, dining room table and stuff. It's no big deal. Um, you just have to be, a, just like a jigsaw, you kind of have to get the speed right. You cut through, and different foams have different speeds, or else you'll start to drag the wire. and You'll kind of get off where you want to cut. Or if you leave, if you go too slow... Depending on the foam, you may melt a, uh, a hole, not a hole, like a whole hole, but like a circle. instead of the wire, like, yeah, like a circle. So instead of the, the wire being like, you know, one eighth, you know, round, you leave it sitting there for a little while and, it's, and then it grows to one half an inch, you know, half an inch. You know, just, <laughs> right. You know. right. So, you, so it's, so, so it, it helps just to get a piece of scrap and then you just push it through and you can kind of feel, you know, where it's cutting at the right speed where it's not cutting too fast, where you're dragging the wire through and not cutting all the way and it's making a drag or too slow. So it's, it's a little bit of an art form, just like I said, anything else, but really, I mean, two minutes doing it and you're like, Oh, I got it. That's true. It works. It works really well on this or uh, Owens Koning XPS. It works really well on blue core uh, and EPS. I, I don't, I've never used it on the EPP because I can cut EPP. It's a, no. It's a open okay. Sum. So there, okay. All, I would say all the other phones except for EPP, EPP, you can cut, you can cut wire cuts because that's how they do it. They do wire cut EPP, but it typically wants a higher temperature. Right. And I don't remember if that wire cutter goes that high. I don't think I, so. I want to say it does not does not go that high and it's actually quicker just to cut it with a knife than it is to cut it with the wire cutter um but once again you know go and experiment and you can see but uh um, all the foams can be cut with that it's just that normally though with that particular cutter there's no way to like a there's no rheostat on it that you'll turn up or down 
just one temperature. And I know for, like you said, EPO through the other foams, no problem. EPP, I don't remember it getting through there. I, yeah. I tried it with mine. So. Yeah, I, I've never really tried it because I just don't have anything that basically cuts, I mean, that that I needed to cut with the EPP. Most of them were already cut, so. Right. So now I have this this diamond shape piece and I can use sandpaper basically this corning wear uh, and blue core as well if you have blue core now blue core is really thin it's not thick like this um, oh it is well There's, you can you can buy it. you can buy some that is a little thicker I think but the blue core yeah, sheets well, that I have are really get a half really an inch thin. you can get uh, an inch and you can get the two inch too it's just that it's uh, like you said it has a different feel to it and Unlike being able to buy those in just two by two sheet, you know, little sheets, the corny, mm-hmm. the the blue core stuff, you have to buy uh, eight foot regular eight foot section, like you know, like regular, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, drywall, like drywall. Oh drywall, right, the, the size of a drywall. The size is right. Yeah. Well, so the corning the corning much. wall works really well, and it is pink, but it sands really really well. Now I yes, wouldn't use eighty grit on better. this. Don't use eighty grit. <laughs> No, you make it disappear pretty quick. <laughs> well, that and the fact that the 80 grit, it, it is foam, so it just grabs, uh, you know, part of the foams and rips it. So it's not really uh, right. good. I, I would use something a little higher, 400 grit maybe, something that's got really, or, or even the, that real high 800 grit or, or the one that you use for cars. Uh, it's a wet sandpaper. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it takes a little longer to do it, but you can basically put the nose on the airplane Take one of those Olfla knives. Do you have one of those? It clicks. It's got a real long blade yes, to it. Yeah. You can carve that uh, in into a cone. Conical. Conical shape, yeah. And then you've got it in the right shape, and then you just sand off the edges to make it more uh, pointy. And you can make it as pointy as you want or as round as you want with the with the sandpaper. Just put a little effort into it. Don't push too hard. Just lightly sand on it, and you'll get it nice and smooth. And then once again, you can take the spackling and you can put it in the the crease that goes between the fuselage and the nose cone. You can fill that in, and now it looks like it's all one piece. Or, or if you make a mistake, that's the other nice part. About it. Very true. Like let's say that the nose cone doesn't look good at all. I can just pull the nose cone off. It's made out of foam. Just pop it off. Get another piece of foam. Start all over. But I would suggest that at at the point where you decide to start working with foam, I would go ahead and go to the yeah. store and buy one of these Corningware uh, two by two squares. Cut off a section, figure out what sand, you know, just cut off a scrap piece, figure out what sandpaper works, figure out if you're going to use a foam cutter or go buy a foam cutter. They're only like, what, 30 or $40, I think, for this foam cutter. It works really well if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, we, I use mine all the time yeah. to make repairs. But anyway, figure out the, you know, what, what speed of the foam cutter and just kind of practice all that stuff before you just start tackling the big jobs. But it's important to understand that the big jobs aren't that big of a deal. It's almost harder to work on small parts of foams and round pieces of foams than it is to work on a larger section. You were missing, let's say, my T50, for instance. Um, when we had a mishap with the T50, it took a little bit of the EPO foam off of the leading edge and tip of the wing. Right. And, and this is where people tend to get scared. They tend to, they tend to freak out and go, wow, there's a whole section of foam missing. I mean, once again, it's not structural, but they go, wow, you know, that's, that's more than just gluing the two pieces back together. There's a whole section like, or a divot missing out of this, this plane. Uh, what, what should I do? It's too much to put spackle in. It's too big of a hole to put spackle in, but you know what? You just have to go over to your scrap foam, cut up, cut a piece that roughly fits in there, glue it in with some Gorilla Glue or something, you know, to get it, you know, in there. Get out that knife, uh, the, the uh, elongated blade knife, cut, do a rough cut around it, sand it, throw some more spackle on it, and it's fixed. And people don't believe that you're able to do that. You know, that you. how did you fix that? It's not, it's not that hard, folks. It really isn't. You just... You just can't be afraid, you know. I, I hate to say the term, Mike, but you just need to make foam your bitch. That's just what that's just what you have to do. You, you don't be afraid yeah, you of it. You just have to be in charge just, of it. That's for sure. Just just take control of it, and it can do some amazing things. If if the hole's too big or doesn't quit uh, fit quite right, 
um, or you're missing the piece to put back in there, well, just cut out a square chunk and then cut out a square chunk of foam and just jam it in there. And then, you know, rough cut it out and then throw some spackle on it to fill it in. And, and then it's just you smooth it out, looks beautiful, sand it, and you're done. Very true. Yeah. The EPO type foams have a little bit more of a problem connecting the two. You can usually use a Gorilla Glue or some sort of a like contact cement, but you got to be careful with the contact cement. Make sure that the the XPS type foam, that pink foam, will actually take it. It will take epoxy, oh, or you, or you don't melt. Yeah, it. that's what I'm saying. If you put it on there, and and then you put it together. For instance, um, one of the guys that we fly with, he had. Uh, a little airplane that he purchased, he crashed it. It was an EPO. It broke a couple of pieces and it broke one of the wing tips off. So he basically took it and he had some welder's glue. He put the welder's glue on it and he stuck the two pieces together. Not a problem, you would think. <laughs> but the welder's glue you needs air. The welder's glue needs air in order to dry. Oh, true. And when you push the two pieces together, it doesn't get air. So it looks for the air by burning holes into the into the foam. Well, I think it's the solvent that's in the glue that when you put it, once again, you put it on something and the solvent's supposed to burn off or whatever, dry out, leaving the glue behind. Uh, and then you're supposed to push the two pieces together. And like you said, by pushing them together, that means that solvent is sitting up against the glue. Bad chemical reaction turns into a slurry little mess and you have a big old hole. Well, and in this particular case, he handed me the airplane and I picked it up. I was, he said, it's not flying right. It feels weird. And I picked the wing up and almost stuck my thumb right through the middle of the wing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What did you do here? I said, you, you have to let this dry. You cannot let, you know, you can't glue this and then put them inside and expect this to dry. It's not going to do it. So they didn't understand that. They didn't know that. And so now it's like you have all this foam. It's hollow inside. And sometimes if that's along the spar or in an attachment point, it can cause weakness. And now if you pull a heavy load on that foam, it'll actually snap off because there's no, no foam on the inside. It's only on the outsides. And it usually doesn't come all the so, way through. So I know what the problem is. They didn't listen to our glue episode that's, <laughs> that's, that's true the problem. yeah if they listened to our glue episode on what what glues to use for what situations they would have known better this is so, true yeah yeah that's true they they should have you can always go back and listen to the glue episode so <laughs> well, i'm just razzing those guys because you know <laughs> yeah it was a hard lesson they they did get the airplane yeah, I, back I, the i'm airplane. sure i'm sure that's what you say to them all the time when they come up and go mike what's the i got this problem and you go hey that's episode 26 <laughs> Yes, indeed. Have you been listening to my podcast? <laughs> uh, you know, hey, I'm doing it for your benefit. Yes. Well, the T50, going back to the T50, uh, it was a leading edge of the wing and the wing tip. And basically, because of, it's got really super thin wings, I actually used blue core in that instance rather than the pink uh, foam. And so the blue core, uh, I, I, you can actually stack it. I have the thin stuff. And so I, I just cut two pieces together, put a little CA on it, and, and actually got them to stick together so that I could cut the piece out. But anyway, the, I just took the, I took the two you know, blue core pieces together, and I, you know, I kind of glued them together. And then I basically took the other wing, because it's the opposite, right? You have one going left and one going right. right. So I basically took it, rolled it upside down, which is now the equivalent of the other wing, and I just traced out on the blue core foam the, the exact dimensions of what the wing should look like. Then I basically cut it out and attached it to, and, and this is where I think this is where people probably fear the most because it's easy to have a chunk missing and try to wedge a piece in there. But in this particular instance, I had to cut out all of the bad foam. So I literally hacked off the, the wing up to, about the wing root. So from the rear up to the wing root and then out to the, to the edge. It, it, it looked like I just hacked the wing almost clean off, you know, right through the middle of the wing, but it made for a very clean cut. So now my foams actually match up. They're, they're not ragged, you know, ragged, raggedy on one side and, right. and, and 
clean, clean on the other so that I'm trying to piece them together and make them work, I actually cut it to where the two pieces can now blend together a lot better. So then I took the e, e, I mean the uh, blue core foam, and as I cut that square out or I cut that piece out, now I had to cut the blue core out to match the piece. So I cut them out, laminated the two pieces, to, or you know, glued the two pieces together, stuck them in there, and then I had to decide whether I wanted the top to be flush with the the foam or the bottom because now the two pieces together these two pieces together were thicker than the edge of the wing so way out at the wing tip so what i did is i decided since the bottom had servos and and was a little rougher than uh, the top and the top was what everybody you know if it was sitting on the ground it's what they would see i decided to match the tops of the blue core and the wing so I put them together, wedged them, in, wedged them in there. I used a little drop of CA, which actually heats up the foam, and it'll melt the two pieces together. And, and that's how I actually got them to stick. Then on the bottom, I just took that Ofla knife, which is a long blade. And, you know, basically, I have one here on my desk, but it looks like this. I, I took the, the Ofla blade, made it, you know, sticks clean out like this, and then I just shaved all of the blue core foam down at the same time camber as the rest of the wing so it worked out really really well then comes the hard part you just have to go outside and sand it don't sand inside it gets blue core dust oh, yeah uh do, things the husbands do not do you know you, you can you can get away with doing that cutting on the hot wire cutting indoors right do not sand in the kitchen yeah no or anywhere you will wife. not take we will not take responsibility <laughs> in telling you to do this exactly no no just say no <laughs> <laughs> Easy way to get in the doghouse, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that dust gets everywhere. But luckily for me, I got some lawn furniture, and the dogs like to go outside. So I just go outside, and while the dogs are out playing around, I just sand on it. You know, you can basically kind of look and see when you need to stop sanding or, or use a block. Sometimes I'll take another piece of foam. Actually, I'll take a piece of this, this pink foam into like a little brick about, hmm, about the size of a bar of soap. And then I'll wrap that 400 grit sandpaper on here and it makes for a really flat surface. So now as I, you know, sand on it, it, it sands even when it gets down to the, you know, where the blue core starts coming down, where it's even with the actual wing portion of it, it'll start sanding the paint off the wing. And I know I've matched it at that point. The cool thing about it is I took my hobby knife again and there's panel lines on the top of the wing. So I just took the, the knife, not the, the sharp blade portion of it, but the, the holder, the, whatever you call this part that sticks out. It's the, you know, the little, the little part right here that, that sticks out. It's got like a little point on right, it. That's... It's not sharp. It's just the metal that, that protects the blade. And right. So you could use anything that has a point that's metal or pla hard plastic. Yeah, the credit card. Take you the credit card that you're using. And you can just take it and you can just draw a line and a panel line. You can basically just draw straight down the, the foam and trace out the panel lines. It puts a little divot in the foam, a little spray paint on it, and it looks just like it was never – nothing ever happened. And yep. when you showed up after I did that repair, I don't know if you could even tell that the, the wing was different. Well, not only did you do that repair, but you also were working on the – uh, putting new gear in it and the gear wasn't didn't quite fit right and it wasn't wouldn't fit in the old where the old gear came out and you had to do some modifications on the gear that whole gear um not box but the uh, uh what do you want to call it? where the, the gear sat and you had to move some stuff forward and back and had to remold some stuff and after you got done doing that it looked like it you know it, it belonged there oh that it looked yeah that was on my f-18 Oh, excuse me, not the yeah. that was yeah. that big. And that and that's an EPS foam. So we'll have to talk about that in our next episode. But okay. The yeah. the EPS foam was was a little bit different cuz it it's like styrofoam. But for the e, the EPO foam that the T50 was made out of, it just sanded fine. I used a little bit of spackling to kind of take the, you know, the joint out of it. And then I drew the panel lines in it. There's a a missile on the end of it. I actually Basically took the pink foam and made it into a missile as well. Took the little pieces off of it. I actually had the long piece that was already there, but I needed the head of it with the little fins. I just cut out little fins, glued them all on, sanded them, spray painted it black, 
look good as new. You really couldn't tell the difference. Yep. So EP, EPO foam, uh, just to recap for this one, you can use water, uh, hot water, to get it to straighten out. If you were to ding it up uh, or put a big dent in it, you can get it out that way. If it crunches, like if you hit the, the ground and something wrinkles, like the wing or the nose, a lot of times it's the nose. It kind of crumples in. As long as it doesn't bust apart, it just crumples in. You can usually use steam and pull it all back out, put some reinforcements. So I use that fiber tape that you and I use for the drywall. You can just put it on the inside or along the outside, use a little spackling to make it smooth, repaint it, you're back in business. You don't have to buy the whole new fuselage. Or if you actually took the chunk out of it, then basically you can use the EP, X, or XPS foam and and mold it to the EPO and you can use either epoxy or gorilla glue is my favorite oh yeah and then, plus it just fills in all the little cracks whatever yeah and you can if you catch it uh, soon enough you can sand a, a, some of it you can't sand it once once it gets hard and, uh, and it doesn't yeah, sand very it, well it but. does it it doesn't sand at the same rate you can you can sand it but it's just that the foam will give away quicker than than the glue the glue does. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, it's easier to cut that stuff and then go over it with uh, with the spackle and then sand it smooth and then try to sand it smooth. Right. So what I normally do is is all uh, right before it dries, I'll take my hobby knife and just cut the, all the little spi- spikes that come out, or if there's any glue sticking up above the joint, I'll just cut all that with my knife. And then let it harden up in there. And then when I do sand it or put some spackling on it, it'll just kind of blend right in. It doesn't, you know, make a big goopy mess. Yeah, so once you do all of that, then you can use either uh, your airbrush or a rattle can. Minwax works really well to prep the surface. Like uh, Jay said earlier, if, if you've put spackling on there, just a little coat of Minwax over that foam, it'll actually take any type of paint and it'll look just as good. And it flies just as well, too. Um... If you have a good eye, you can look at the camber of the wings. Like on the T-50, I had to have a little fatter in the front and a little thinner in the back. And so I just uh, used a little template, and I kind of drew on the foam and said, this is how big it needs to be, and I just sanded down to that line, and it seemed to work out. seemed to, to work perfect. Great. I like using the pink, I like using the pink foam for, uh, for pretty much every repair, but for the EPO, it just attaches a little bit differently. Well, fantastic. I think uh, our listeners can really use that information. Yeah, I would hope so. We were talking about the EPO and pretty much got a good handle on that. But now if we go to the other extreme, uh, EPO, I mean EPP, which it has totally different characteristics than the EPO. It doesn't really mold all that well. I mean, they usually you know wire cut it into a shape or something, but you can't get the detail or the molding details that you can with the EPO. You know, that's the great part about the EPO is that they're really making great molds for it and it comes out and you, you know, that the panel lines look good. The little details, the little, you know, thing with jiggers all look good, but you really can't get that with EPP and EPP. Once again, you're, you know, usually going for structure or being able to bounce it, smash it, hit walls, etc. cetera. Um, but you can break it. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not a challenge that you can't, it's unbreakable. Right. It is, it yeah. is breakable, but unlike, Unlike the UPO, which will dent, you know, the EPP will tear and you'll basically make tears in it, not denting it, you'll tear it. And uh, it calls for a different mindset when you put that stuff back together. What what kind of different mindset? Well, we were talking about um, with, EP, with EPO, you, you already have, when you take two pieces of EP, uh, EPO and put them back together, they have a bit of rigidity, right? It's a dense foam, and it's fairly rigid. Yeah, EPP, close cell, I think is what they you, call when it. When you put those two back together, and depending on how the tear or the repair, I mean, the damage is, it's floppy. You can't, you can use, like I said, you can use all glues, and everything will stick, paint, whatever. You can put on EPP and not have to worry about melting anything or, any damage to it, but the only, but it's also a, it's, it's weakness too, because it, it's just floppy stuff. You know, you can't, you can use CEA for a repair. 
but CA is brittle. This stuff is, you know, rubbery, floppy, whatever. And the CA will actually crack and shatter because there's nothing to hold it. And um, the stuff starts flexing and just the nature of that glue can't resist that kind of torture, you know? And so you have to use right. a glue that's as flexible as the EPP. And uh, so Which is why we use Gorilla Glue for that, right? Um, Gorilla Glue works with this, with this particular uh, EPP. Um, like once again, if you want to fill a hole or a divot that you may, you may be missing because it does stick to it and it does expand where, you know, uh, the, the joints, the pieces don't fit well together because you just can't cut out, like you said, the, the corning wear and stick it in the hole or the square piece that's missing with EPP. You have to get another piece of EPP and re-glue that back in there. It has to be the same material. So, um, therefore, you know, like I said, um, I, I would use Gorilla Glue, and then I'd want to use Quick Grip or um, maybe a contact cement or uh, a welder's glue. Works, you know, as a contact, works really well with EPP. Um, right. Or, uh, uh, I said hot glue already, right? Um, those work great because they're flexible, and they work well with this stuff. And you just have to start using that that stuff to do it. And plus, you have to look at your repair and go, well, do I have to give some structure to it? And what's one of the things if you damage a plane, uh, EPP planes, to look to see, well, is there any structure behind it? And what I mean by that is, is there a wooden platform behind it? You know, is there a wooden structure right. behind it? Is there some carbon? If you hit hard enough, you know, you can crack or fracture the carbon and not even know it. So you have to really kind of get in there and kind of feel it and you feel it, you know, and you hear it like crackling if it's broken. And you may have to cut <laughs> it out and replace it. And, right. you know, generally, I did that with my wings, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, On my and, wings. When yeah. I, when I sh- shattered it, it, uh, it literally made the carbon fiber powder. Yeah, it turned into powder. So basically, we cut that out. We grabbed an old arrow, and we just jammed that back in there. And then we slapped it with, uh, like, you know, quick grip and shoved it back all back together again. Or it, sometimes you can't take it out, but then you, you might be able to put a little bit of epoxy on the, if you can get to it and see it. You could put some epoxy onto the uh, carbon and let that set back up. And then you put some, some other, you know, flexible glue on top of that and then get the EPP to stick to, to the flexible glue to the carbon. And you can make repairs like that. So you might have to get a little creative when it comes to some of the repairs. Um, you know, we talked about that tape as well. Uh, and the, the, it goes along with the spa, that spackling tape. And that stuff with... Um, like goop, uh, that's another. You can either you can do the quick grip or you can use the goop, and you can put that stuff over tears or part or somewhere where you can see where it's a lot of stress on on the EPP, and that stuff, mm-hmm. it when you add it with the goop or whatever behind it, oh, it it's fantastic. It's super lightweight. That stuff doesn't tear. It doesn't rip. Now, now once again, you can rip it. I'm, you know, those hundred mile an hour <laughs> crashes inside of a mountain, right? It will rip. It's not a challenge, folks. <laughs> it will rip, but it it's you know ten times better than having nothing at all, and the stuff does not weigh all that much for these types. And of it materials. gets almost like fiberglass. I mean, it, that is what that fiber tape is. It's well, yeah, fiber, it's, fiberglass. It's, fiberglass. it's just yeah. a different type of fiberglass. Yeah, and you're uh, but and once when you, you start using the minwax or the goop or whatever, yeah. then it it actually starts. It gets very rigid. Yep. So. Um, all I can say for, for repairs, these types of repairs, you might have to look at it, get a little creative. Um, and just remember, the stuff is floppy, and you can't use rigid glues to make the repairs. You have to use something that's flexible. And like I said, um, it could be as simple or as quick a repair if you're out at the field. Uh, I've seen some guys who will have their hot glue guns hooked up to their uh, lipos, and they'll go out there and they'll just hot glue something together, grab their credit card, you know, Make it smooth, fill it up with hot glue, and go fly it. Now, the model gets a little heavier, but, you know, they don't care. It right. makes a quick Well, I mean, it, it keeps them uh, flying, I think. It keeps, so. Yeah, it keeps them flying. Uh, and a lot of times, like, people, they'll have an EPP. Like, you'll see it. You'll have EPO or EPP hinges. You know, it's just they just mold it. And that's the hinge. And uh, a lot of times when you have a, a crash that doesn't maybe won't damage the plane, but it will rip the hinge, the live hinge. And so you may have half a hinge that's torn and you're like, oh no, what do I do? And then once again, you can go grab the welder's glue or the quick grip 
uh, or uh, the Beacon's glue. Uh, what is that Beacon's glue that you use on your uh, uh, foam tack? Foam tack. You can use foam tack, and you just go very lightly over. You know, you pull you pull away uh, part of the part of the uh, the aileron or something that's you know pull it away. You put very lightly. You go over it with uh, one of those glues. Let it tack up, and then push the aileron to it and hold it for a bit, and it repairs and it repairs it just like that. Pretty neat. Or you could or you could use the other method, which is you push the two pieces together. You get some hot glue. You go over it. You grab a razor blade, whoosh, and you and you just like the credit card. You just run the rate the uh, push the glue right over it and take off all the excess, and it'll cool instantly and it'll make a little nice fiber. You know, make a nice hinge. Um, that stuff works really well, but there's a problem if you use it, say, where I came from, Alaska. Those those hinges tend to stiffen up when you if you're trying to fly anything below 32 degrees below you know Fahrenheit, it, they start to stiffen up. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, yeah. The I, other bad I don't part know if that's is a problem here in the you, U.S. Well, yeah, right where you live. What's the temperature there? Right. Now? I know it's hot. 100, right. 110 degrees the other day. 110 degrees. You know what happens when you take hot glue and you stick it out in 110 degrees? Especially the low, uh, the low temperature hot glue. Starts exactly, running. my friend. It gets you're, fly, <laughs> you're flying along, and <laughs> fly. why the why the why those things fly off? That's, That's odd, right? Yeah. So, so I I use a little bit different uh, technique because that, of the heat here. I don't use the hot glue, and I have used the foam tack to stick to the, you know, the two pieces together. But on occasion, if you cut a forty five on one and a forty five on the other, you've got a really thin super thin you know layer there so i've actually take blenderm tape put it on the epp it doesn't stick very well so you take some welder's glue stick it on your finger or just rub it on just kind of rub it on to the tape on the the blenderm tape and it will actually melt the blenderm tape into the epp yes that's very true i don't know why it does that but it works really well for for reinforcing hinges like if you Put a, a, a like uh, you have an aileron. You have you know the right side, the the, or the right end, the left end of it, and you put a strip on a blender and right on that, right on the ends, and maybe one piece in the middle. You don't have to go the whole length. You just put right. three three little strips, and that's enough to reinforce where that thing would tear. And it, you know, once again, it's, it you can still tear it when you hit a, a wall or a car going eighty, but it you know for normal crashes, everyday rough and tum- tumble stuff. That stuff will not tear. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, that's true. It is amazing. Well, hopefully all this information is good for our listeners to be able to go out and give it a try. We're kind of running out of time, but we'll pick this up on our next podcast and talk a little bit about EPS foam and the, the good and the bad of, of fixing that. We're still using the XPS when we repair those things. But for now, we uh, appreciate you joining us here on the Park Flyer podcast, and we'll see you next week. Jay, thanks for joining us. Hey, as always, glad to be here, Mike. All right. We'll talk to you soon. See ya. See ya. You have been listening to the Park Flyer Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to your next visit. Please give our show a star rating and review, and feel free to email us your questions, topics, or suggestions to parkflyerpodcast at gmail.com.